All right, so one of my viewers is having some clutch issues. So I'm going to do a quick video here and just uh, just to show some different examples of what clutches might look like and what uh, you might experience. All right. All right, so this is just one style here. You got... See this part here? This would basically be considered your sprocket. Uh, this would be the clutch drum and your clutch assembly would be inside here. Um, you see how this spins freely? That is correct. It should spin freely. Um, you, it's normal to have a little bit of play there, but the chain rides on there. And uh, so whenever the motor is spinning, this part here is connected directly to the crankshaft. So you can see how the piston would move and cause this to go. So as I hold this, you see how it wants to spin freely in there. What happens is as RPM goes up, the clutch shoes will expand and hit the drum part here and engage everything to cause the outside to spin, which then turns your chain. That's a pretty simple process. So let me show you another one. Here's another style. See how the drum spins freely? But the inside is connected right to the crankshaft. You see how the crankshaft is right here? See how it's, it turns with the crankshaft. It's, it's uh, linked directly with the engine's speed. And as the RPMs go up, these shoes, just from the force of it spinning, these shoes will want to push out, hit this, and lock it all in place. It'll hit the drum and want to lock it all in place, causing it to spin. All right. Now I got another one I want to show you. This is a common style for vintage saws and some modern ones i want to show you one here because we got to some issues on this one not just this it's stripped out but watch what happens when i turn the drum see how the crankshaft's wanting to turn see what happens when i turn the drum the cr when i turn the drum here the crankshaft's trying to turn too so this one has problems it shouldn't be seized up like that. Now, a common issue is there's a bearing in here. And a lot of times the bearing is just seized up or corroded or whatever. But some of your modern bearings, I'm actually looking one for one right now. But some of your modern bearings have... Uh, a plastic cage around them. There we go. So here's a bearing. But some of your modern bearings, this cage that holds them is actually made of plastic. And in high heat, it could fail pretty easily, uh, causing everything to seize up. But the bearing, you remember seeing this? The bearing just goes right inside there. Like that. And that's what allows the, the drum to spin, spin freely. Another problem you could have is you could have something fail inside the clutch. Causing... You could literally have something fail in there and have it all jam up. Uh, you could end up having it fill up with dirt so much that the shoes won't retract. Uh, there's a number of issues that could happen inside of here to cause the clutch to seize up. Uh, some saws have a chain break. Uh, you might have a band running around the outside of this. And you could have a failure there 
that causes the brake to engage uh, whenever you don't want it to. I actually don't have a chain brake saw handy here, or I'd show you, but uh, pay attention to the chain brake as well. Uh, it's just a band that usually goes around there and uh, a lever up on top that would engage the brake. So with the brake engaged, the drum should not spin freely. And with the, the, the brake disengaged, then the clut or the drum would spin freely. Since this one here, this nut would unscrew normally, you know, lefty loosey, but the inside, the clutch part is reverse thread. So you'd have to turn it to the right to unscrew it. So pay attention to that whenever you're working on your clutch. Some of the parts come off normal, lefty loosey, and then some of the parts are reverse thread. So you'd go right. Now, whenever you wanna take these nuts off, or the clutch off, the engine is gonna to wanna to turn. Okay, the whole thing. So what you wanna to do to keep that from happening is you pull the spark plug and you put a little bit of rope down in there. But what you gotta do though is you gotta, as you turn it, you stick something down in there to feel the piston. You don't want the piston to go down past the exhaust, all right? You want to keep it above that point and then you just put some rope down in there that way whenever you turn your nut it'll hit that rope and keep the motor from turning then you can unscrew your parts but be careful that your rope doesn't want to try to come out the exhaust if your rope tries to come out the exhaust it could get lodged in there and wedge your piston into place preventing you from being able to turn the motor either direction if you wedge it in there good enough. And then you're looking at a possible disassembly of the engine. But if you keep that piston above the exhaust, when you stick your rope in, you'll be fine. Just don't let it get down past that exhaust. But yes, this drum should turn freely without any issue. You should not see the crankshaft turn whenever you turn the clutch, all right? Again, there are many styles. There are many, many styles. Uh, different manufacturers like different styles. Uh, this is off an old McCulloch right here, and this one's actually what they call a rim drive. And I'll show you that. So this, this one here is pretty common. That's your sprocket. You can, most of them come in seven tooth. And this one here is a rim drive. Let me see if I can get my camera out there. See how it looks like a little disc in there? That is called a rim drive. That's about the best description I can give you right now. A uh, little tip on how to make sure your sprocket and clutch is working properly. All right, till the next one.